there's no worse feeling as a player than getting your coach fired. Like like that, like you don't think of it as a player's perspective because all of a sudden you're like, that's on me, right? Like like I got I you don't have a job because of me. And so that makes some, you know, forces them to step up a little bit. So maybe if you wanted to take that aspect, it would help. But uh, just the way he rolls, I also wouldn't be surprised again if there's the same coordinators next year. Like maybe at this point you lose out, you finish the season, what, three and nine. Maybe you're forced to make some changes. Something's got, hey, like you have to change something. Excuse me. But then there's argument against keeping Nardo. I think he's the the obvious, hey, get rid of him. He's over his head. But the argument is, hey, you brought him in to run an entirely new system. And it's only his second year. Um, And not only that, he hasn't been able to run a system. Like even Marshall asked him after the game Saturday, asked Gundy, like, hey, you brought Nardo in to run a three down front. And you're not running a three down front. Um, so maybe, hey, we're going to buy our time. You know, maybe Gundy's saying, hey, we're going to buy our time, get rid of him. And we're going to bring someone in that does run the offense or defense like we used to. And this isn't working out like we thought. And so either way, um, I think Nardo was dealt a horrible hand coming to Oklahoma State. He was in over his head. He was brought in to, to implement an entirely new system with players that not were not his. Um, and then they didn't ever actually run it. Like it struggled the first three or four games, and then they just kind of, it was like a hybrid of it. They still had four down. Now all of a sudden they're like not doing it at all. So he's not even really running his defense. He was not able to bring his own staff in. I mean, he he was bringing, you know, the same guys. He was teaching the traditional four down set. Um, and so he was never set up for success here. I, I, I think it would be better off for him as well to get fired, to be able to go somewhere else. Maybe this finally got his foot in the door at the D1 level, maybe get a decent job somewhere else. Um, but I think it'd be better for the program and him if they parted ways. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Gundy saying, well, he's only had two years. We shouldn't just completely scrap this thing after two years. And then for Casey Dunn, I mean, I remember it was just what? Three, four years ago, he's yelling at, you know, he's yelling about a press conference because people are wondering if Casey Dunn's going to lose his job. And here we are again, as people still wondering if Casey Dunn's going to lose his job and he still continues to have a job. So um, I don't know. I think he's going to, and Casey Dunn may do just enough, right? He's still, I mean, last outing was bad, but he didn't look terrible. Honestly, the, the defense or the offense looked pretty solid against BYU. Um, they looked pretty solid against Baylor. Um, they looked horrible against Arizona State, but you could argue, well, he needs a mobile quarterback and he had boom, you know, whatever it may be. Um, I think there would be enough excuses out there where I, I'm just saying, I know I'm rambling, but the short answer is I, I don't, I wouldn't be shocked if both coordinators are back. Like I, I, again, trying to brace Oklahoma State fans for the worst could be a tough season next year. And this is a Mike Gundy where he's loyal and true. I mean, that, whether it's a fault or you like the guy for it, he's going to stick by the guys he hires, whether it's just to prove he's not wrong or just because he's a loyal dude. I don't know what it is, um, but for whatever reason, he keeps sticking Casey Dunn around. Yeah, I know we have a fellow friend here in common who I'm not going to mention who is a big Casey Dunn supporter. And I, for a while, have thought, hey, you know what, Casey Dunn could be a really good offensive coordinator and Gundy could be getting in his way. We definitely thought that in a little bit of 2021 when, all right, Spencer Sanders would be playing good, but not great. And then we all of a sudden got a little bit more cautious in, in our play calling, you know, and basically got very conservative in our, in our calling and, you know, what was going on. But at this point here, I think there's been enough time where Casey Dunn's been the offensive coordinator where, hey, it's either this is what he's got to live with, he's got to live with these limitations that he's got, or... He's just not as great as I had hoped, you know, being a wide receiver coach who I would say is the preliminary wide receiver coach in the nation if it's just wide receivers. I mean, and, and you're not talking about any other part of his job. But then when it comes down to, hey, we've, we've got some great wide receivers, but we got to figure out ways to just give him the ball. And every single thing I see on, I, mean, I couldn't call it Twitter for forever, but Twitter slash X is oh, hey, oh, if only we could do this. And it's just some crazy play call scheme where SMU has a fake, you know, 
play action and then actually pops it back up to the guy that the play action was for after a second, you know, and it's just some, just some cute little design of some play call. And it's like, Oh man, if only we could do this. And I would love to tell every Oklahoma state fan. I think we could try some of that. If our line could block a little bit better, especially in the running game. I mean, how are you going to run the play action that well? If you can really only block in the running game and not in the passing game. I know we talked about that for a while. The last time I had you on here, uh, before the BYU game of like, hey, what's the difference? What's going on? And what's all this deal? But when it comes towards next season, what do you think the the floor is? Because we don't play a ton of easy teams next year. Non-conference, it gets harder. We go to Oregon. You know, I mean, it's just not... It's one of those things where, yeah, they won't, probably won't have Dylan Gabriel, but it's still Oregon. They'll, they'll finish top 10 in the nation. They'll have an amazing recruiting class, and they'll probably have a transfer in who... Heck, maybe they go get the OU guy again and go get Jackson Arnold out of the portal and all of a sudden he blossoms in their offense because they're a little bit better at every other skill position. Who knows? I mean, it, I mean, they could go tr- try to grab Zane Flores or Malachi Smith, depending on whichever one doesn't stay. You know, I mean, it's just it's one of those things. Um, so what do you think the kind of the floor is for next year? Oh, the floor. i would be honest, I don't even... Just trying to keep up with the three games ahead. I haven't looked too much at next season, but the fact that... Um, like you said, they do have a tougher conference. Is next season when they go to Fayetteville, or is that the next season? Uh, that's a great question. I think, um, you know, what I I think I think they don't play uh, Alabama next. Or excuse me, Arkansas next year at all. I think we're I think we're off until like twenty twenty seven. That would be a uh, a tough break <laughs> to have Oregon and uh, Arkansas. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I just, I, I could not. It's, it's really tough for me. And, and next year, that is right. Next year, we go. We have U, the UT Martin Skyhawks at home, at Oregon Ducks, and then Tulsa at home. So next year, maybe the Tulsa win. I mean, UT Martin Skyhawks. I would figure it was an easy dub, but who knows? We never count anything here at this point. But then, yeah, next year the conference schedule. You know, we, we get to play Houston and Baylor. Um, and, K- and KU, but I, I'm i skeptical to say the best after this year and also knowing everything in this year is just going to change next year. Is, is there may- Maybe the better question here is, is there some optimism surrounding the new quarterbacks of like, hey, you know what? Like Maybe next year we get back to a bowl game or get to a bowl game. I'm not going to say this. The whole year's canceled just yet, but is there some optimism surrounding next year at least to see what a new offense could look like, even if it's not going to be good? I would definitely say there's more optimism about the quarterback position there is now. I think a lot of it is we knew what Alan Bowman's ceiling was. Even coming into the season, we thought, oh, he could be really good. We knew what he could do. I mean, there was no it was just like Mason Rudolph. Again, Mason Rudolph, Marshall might die on the hill that he's the best quarterback to come from Oklahoma State. Um, But he was not going to pull it out of Justice Hill's stomach and go sprint around the corner. Like I remember having an awkward interaction Bless Rudolph, Texas Tech, maybe on the road. Um, and he pulled it, and they, I don't know if they called a run or he just scrambled and he ran a touchdown. And I said something about it. I was not who you are, right? And he was like, Are you saying I'm slow? Are you saying I'm not fast? And in a way, I'm like, I know, like we've never seen it. And he just kind of laughed. He's like, No, I get it. He's like, I'm not. He's, I was like, I'm, but yeah, I just, I wasn't surprised. Like, I know I can run a little bit, just not compared to the guys I'm playing. Um, but we never expect that from Al Bowman, right? We've seen him try to make him do that during the Kansas State game, and it was obviously a horrible flop. Um, but one thing is we saw Rangel can run. We know Smith can run. We know um, we hear we haven't seen it, but we, uh, you know, we've been told Flores can run as well. Um, and so that adds a whole new dynamic. We, we saw the offense, even as, as bad as it was, how much different it looked that first half of BYU when they did have a dual-threat quarterback. Uh, when since Spencer Sanders was able to run it, Casey Dunn's that might have been the best his offense has looked when he was able to just let loose, let Spin Sand do his thing a little bit, um, and things like that. So that is when his offense looks the best, and that would be again, this is all be right, but be back, and who's back? Um, that would be the best thing for the offense, and then um, you lose Ollie, but. Uh, there's been a lot of talk on Rodney Fields Jr. 